Hi there, and Happy New Year, everybody. I'm gonna do a little apple grafting video in the interests of talking about the mistakes I've made and the things I've learned and what I'm gonna do differently going forward as a newbie grafter. And uh, so maybe that will help other newbie grafters to avoid making the same mistakes that I've made. Um, this tree is my is a wild uh, tree that was growing here when we moved in, and I have been in the process of turning it into a Franken tree uh, or a family tree, mainly in the interest of just storing cyan wood and different apple varieties on this tree until I can graft them where I eventually want to put them, which is not right here. Um, but I have attempted a bunch of grafts on this tree. Some of them have succeeded and a lot of them have failed. And I wanted to just really quickly talk about especially the failures that I've made and why I think those have failed. Um, when I first started grafting, I acquired a bunch of cyan wood and I did a few practice grafts and I was, I studied a lot of YouTube videos and, um, I kind of came to some erroneous conclusions based on my practicing and, um, I made a big mistake and one big mistake that I made was m the vast majority of my initial grafts were what I would call rind grafts, all, what are rind grafts or bark grafts onto very small diameter wood. And this is, this is one of them that I, I made that is actually surviving. And what I did was this was probably like uh, a stem about the size of my finger at the time. And I just cut off this branch and then I did two rind grafts on either side of the cut surface and then I wrapped it um, not on like this right here and uh, it took on one side and not on the other um, and this is a Liberty graft and it is actually doing extremely well and it's approximately six feet long this is about a two-year-old graft and it has um, oops sorry for the glare there you can kind of see where the cut was made, where the cyan was inserted. And then <clears throat> this side, I've kind of trimmed down to help it grow back over, but this side is where my other cut was, kind of right here, and that cyan didn't take. So this graft, on the whole, has been very successful, but I did a bunch of grafts like this. And I would say, my initial success rate with them was very high and the bark graft and one of the reasons I was attracted to the bark graft or the the also known as the rind graft um, I think it's more commonly called the rind graft over in Europe or in the UK but uh, one of the reasons I was attracted to this was because the cuts are really easy to make you're just making slits in the bark and lifting a flap of the bark and then you're making some angled cuts on the scion and slipping it in and then you wrap the whole thing and so it's a very simple graft to make and you have a lot of cambial contact and so my initial success rate was probably 80% I was really happy with it the problem with the bark graft when you're doing really small diameter wood like this is it's really weak right at the connection um, and so what ends up happening and what ended up happening to me a lot is I would get these I would get the growth the graft to take and then the science would start doing a lot of growth and then in the middle of the summer that first season all of a sudden I started to lose my grafts because they were snapping off right here at the graft union. And I actually have, this is one that I cut off that I tried to save because I tried to splint it here. This was mother and uh, mother grew really fantastically. I had, I had multiple scions of mother take initially and they just did really well. And then they all started to snap off and I tried to salvage them but the only one that started to snap and I managed to salvage was this graft right here. This is a blue pear main, and I still have this sort of splint 
well, it's not really a splint. It's just I wrapped it again to, to like give the graft more time to like grow stronger here. And I also cut it off, cut the main stem off to like give the, you know, to create a little less leverage. Because I feel like what it is is there's just no strength to the cyan wood because you're cutting it down to almost nothing, this little tiny wedge of wood. And so basically it just creates, structurally it's really weak, right, at the, the join with the stock. So, um, and here are some more barked grafts that I did this year, but the difference is that I took them down to a much larger diameter tree. Uh, part of the tree it's not this little small diameter thing and so there's I think more bark to help structurally hold this and I, I was also able to trim the scions a lot thicker and still get it to wedge in quite effectively whereas um, you're kind of when you're doing it on really small diameter twigs you get all the way down to like little tiny matchsticks and then they just snap off right here um, but the, this is a graph that I did this spring you know in the spring of 2018 and this is uh this one is chestnut and it's it's done really well really well and then this is a uh, trailman which was a variety that steven edholm recommended actually both of these are varieties that steven recommended and i used to have a bunch of cyan wood that steven had given me on this tree but i did all of these um bark grafts this one is another, probably my single most successful bark graft on this tree. This is pink permain, and you can kind of see this was where the other piece, cyan piece was in, but the graft has almost grown around my original cut, and the pink permain is doing really well. And then this is the other uh, variety that I have from Steven, which is uh, Hall and it's doing pretty well too but i had a bunch of see there's still a tag there but everything that i had up on that side steven had given me bite me and sweet 16 and a couple other uh uh varieties that i had grafted onto that section there and they've all they all died and i cut them back um so they actually don't have anything on that section and so i guess one of the things I did not have confidence in myself was doing whip and tongue. And this is one of the two whip and tongue grafts that I have on the tree. And you can kind of see the V shape of the whip and tongue. And the reason I wasn't confident enough to do more whip and tongue was because I was not feeling that my cuts were flat and accurate enough. And so I didn't have confidence in the cambial contact. But I mean, this is a graft that I did this uh, in the spring of 2018. It's Black Oxford and it did really well. Um, and then here is a much less successful whip and tongue graft. This is a uh, Wixen. This is the third time, the third year in a row that I've tried to uh, get Wixen to graft on and it this did live but you can kind of see where the cyan has died down to right here and I, I don't know how long this graft is gonna if this graft is gonna make it through the winter you know and if you look at this graft it's a little it's much sketchier looking um, and I, I just think it's partly you know my lack of skill in making that whip and tongue graft um, and making those cuts and getting good cambial contact. So I guess my main point in all of this is practice your grafts and if I had it to do over again um, I would do mostly whip and tongue um in terms of with dormant cyan wood you know and not do all of these bark and rind grafts just get a bunch of uh suitable apple wood ahead of time that you can just throw away and just make tons and tons of practice grafts with your knife and um until you can get good accurate repeatable cuts um Okay, so let me go talk about bud grafts. One moment. Okay, so this is another apple tree way out over by the creek. This is another wild tree. And I have installed several 
bud grafts on this tree, you can see there's one, there's one, and there's one. And these are all three buds of Gold Rush, because I want to just convert this tree over to Gold Rush as soon as I can. Um, and I am really impressed with bud grafting. Um, I am highly confident that all three of these buds have uh, taken. And what I'm going to do in the spring is just nip these branches off and allow these buds to grow away. And uh, bud grafting is super easy if you can get the bud wood. Because all you have to do is cut the bud out, cut a slit in the bark, and slip it in and wrap it up, and you're done. You know, and you have like perfect cambial contact and the bud itself is like very well protected and moist kept moist so i did make some more bud grafts and a couple of them did fail because i unwrapped them too early because i started to see callus forming and so i thought oh they've taken i can unwrap them which was a mistake so let me show you those okay so what we have here is couple of apple trees that I planted right after we bought the property and I have decided I'm going to graft them over to new varieties. This tree here with the school bus passing, this tree here is a cider apple variety called Brown's apple and I have one bud of Gold Rush right here. And I had two more buds of Gold Rush. I had one here and I had one here. And I saw callus forming around the bud. And so I said, oh, the bud has taken, I'll unwrap them. And that was a mistake because they, the buds immediately dried up and kind of fell out. And so you can see that the tree is repairing the cut that I made. Um, whereas if you look at this one, you can definitely, I mean, I can see callus underneath the plastic there. So what I can do is I can just cut this off in, you know, in a month or two and um, then clip this off and I'll be very interested to see what, what that does. And then I'm probably going to just rebud uh, this tree further up the tree um, next summer. Uh, this tree is Brown's apple which is a, a red fleshed cider apple and it's a very tannic and acidic cider apple and I don't know why the heck I planted this tree because I have zero interest or intention of making hard cider and that's all this variety is good for so I'm gonna um, graft it over and then uh, this tree I've also got a couple of buds inserted of pink pearmain. There's one, there's one, there's one over there. This is a Wolf River tree. It's very healthy. It's produced apples several times. Um, the problem is I just really don't like Wolf River as a variety. I find it all mealy and insipid and it cracks a lot and uh, it's highly recommended by a number of people as a good homestead apple but I find it to be a loser at least grown here on my soil it's just not worth growing as far as I'm concerned you can see the deer have been getting into it huge deer problems this year um, yeah so I'm gonna graft this Wolf River tree over to some other stuff and for me bud grafting has so much to recommend so yeah, bud grafting just has so much to recommend it. Uh, is the, the big hassle for me with bud grafting is like, it's very hard to get your hands on uh, the wood because you need fresh uh, buds to do bud grafting, which is, but if you can get the bud wood, it's the easiest kind of graft to make. Um, and so if you have like somebody who's got a big collection of apples, 
or you have access to you know uh, a lot of uh, the varieties that you want go ahead and bud graft that's my recommendation there, there's no easier graft as far as I can tell um, and uh, yeah the trick is it's really hard to get budwood as like a little homesteader like the com it, it, but it's it's the it's the method that most commercial uh, orchards are using um, for like grafting like custom grafted you know so trees and stuff like that they they bud them you know but they have the wood so uh, yeah bud grafting is probably the simplest way to graft over your tree plus you can get one stick like six inches long and get like eight buds out of it you know that's eight grafts so it's like a really efficient way of making a lot of grafts of a variety and so to me like I feel like if you can get the bud wood it's probably the best way to go um, uh, yeah so what I would say is practice your grafts don't do what I did and just do the easy, easiest grafts you can make um, go ahead and practice whip and tongue and uh, probably if you if you can find wood in the summertime try some bud grafts because that really worked well um, okay so obviously I'm not an experienced graft person uh, I highly recommend Stephen Ed Holmes videos on apples and apple grafting. I also highly recommend uh, Stephen Hayes entire channel which has got a wealth of apple content. He recommends instead of whip and tongue he really loves the saddle graft and that one is even harder to make in my opinion with like a pocket knife than the whip and tongue. So there's a reason whip and tongue is way more popular than saddle graft is because it's really hard to make those cuts accurately. He's a big fan of the whip of the saddle graft, but like uh, whip and tongue is easier to execute in my opinion. And it's even and I have trouble executing whip and tongue. So um, think about uh, what kind of grafts you want to make, and certain grafts have advantages in take, but then they have disadvantages in you know strength of the graft and that's what I found with the uh, bark graft is like it's not a strong graft structurally until like it's really well calloused over which is like two or three years down the road you know and so I lost so many grafts in the summertime you know after they took and that's really frustrating to have all of these nice grafts with all these fresh green leaves and then having them snap off when they're three four feet long you know pretty pretty just dis, you know disappointing so anyway learn from my mistakes and uh try bud grafting it's awesome